but it was interesting you said about the demands of snooker. Mm. And some people who don't get the sport might look at it and go, well, you're just walking around a table potting balls. It's not exactly very exerting. So can you give us a bit of a flavour for the demands that snooker puts on you? Yeah, because it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a lonely sport. You know, you're, uh, you're on the road a lot. It's, 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 it's a really, it's quite a technical sport as well. Um, you're, you're also sitting in your chair a lot. So when you're sitting in your chair and your opponent's at the table, there is nothing you can do. So you have a lot of time to think, you know, and, and it's, how, it's what you do with that thinking time which kind of determines how you do when you do eventually get back to the table. Uh, so, you know, I think sometimes being blessed with too much talent in sport, not just snooker, can not be a good thing because you, you kind of end up getting a bit lazy and relying on talent to get you through. And, and I kind of done that for most of my career. And it wasn't until I, I started working with Ray Reed and people like Steve Peters that I started to appreciate that, you know, for me to become as good as I am today, I needed to work on them other areas because if things were going well for me, then it was great. But if it wasn't, I was like, oh, I don't want to get out of here, I pack my bags, I can be home Thursday, do a bit of running Friday, Saturday, lovely, you know. And, uh, and, 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 and that was me giving up, if you like, you know, not giving up, but me just saying, I just, I just haven't got the fight in me. And, um, and I think, yeah, the demands of snooker can be tough, you know, because it's quite a lonely, mental, a lot of technique is involved and then and then also you you're, you're watching some players that make the game look really easy and that can be quite demoralizing in itself so then you start to to compare yourself to others you know which is which is not a good thing to do because you know um it depends who you're comparing yourself against if you compare yourself against someone that's not as good then it's a good thing but if you're comparing yourself to someone like john higgins you know you're never going to feel good about your game because for me he's the most complete snooker player so it's just being careful with the thoughts that you're allowed to come in your head, really. So, um, yeah, I just think it's, it's a tough sport in, in a way, you know? Mm. What really interests me is probably nearly every other snooker player might look at you and go, you make the game look really mm. easy. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think I, I obviously I do, you know? And I, I was like, sometimes you sit there and you wonder what it is about me and certain people in sport that make people want to watch you play and, 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 and in some ways, you know, you, you kind of get the impression that uh, why do I stand out from every other snooker player? Why does Messi stand out from every other footballer? Why does Roger Federer st stand out from Djokovic and Nadal? And and it, it can't be because of they've achieved more in the game. I just think it's the way that they do it. So if you watch Federer play tennis, you think it's really different to how Nadal and Djokovic play, you know, and and you watch Messi play football, you think, well, no one plays like that, you know. Everyone, everyone's, it's like a physical sport, you know. Whereas when Messi does it, it's like a, it's like a dance, it's like a rhythm, it's like, you know, and Federer's the same. I think probably I'm the same in snooker. It's like, you know, my, my records are great, um, but no better than Stephen Hendry's, not much better than John Higgins. Um, but I just think people, when they watch me play, they go, you know, nobody does it like that, you know. It's a bit like Muhammad Ali in boxing, it's like, you can watch all the heavyweights you like, you know, but when you watch Muhammad Ali, you're like, wow, this, this guy makes the sport look different, you know, and I think probably that's the, the thing that's um, kind of why the snooker fans, if you like, have really taken to me over the years, you know, that's, that's the only thing I can put it down to, really. Mm. And if you could summarise how you play the game differently to anyone else, how would you do that? I think what it is, is, is that I don't rely on power, I don't rely on potting mad balls, I don't rely on, you know, playing long safety battles. My game is all around, you know, controlling that cue ball. And, you know, I'm very rarely, you know, like they always say, if you can be that far from your next ball, then every pot should be easy. It's when the white's that far away that the pots become missable. And I think most people that have played the game realise how difficult it is just to pot a ball, let alone try and get on the next ball. But when you're potting a ball and I'm getting on the next ball really close, I think a lot of people just go, wow, that's, that's really not easy to do. And, and you probably wouldn't appreciate that unless you actually played on a full-size table. So I think my, I wouldn't say I was the best potter in the world. I'm not the best safety player in the world. I'm probably not the best at anything, you know, in any, any area. But what I am good at is getting that white ball from A to B and, and, and making the game easy, if you like. And I think a lot of people just think, 
God, I wish I could make it look that easy. And it doesn't always feel that easy, but there are times when I think, yeah, I'm going to clear up here. You know, like even, <laughs> like, even like when the maximum, when I, on the second red, I said, what's the highest break for 147? I just knew it was going to happen. Yeah. You know, I might have missed, but I just thought, you know what? Yeah, that's, that's well doable. Yeah. <laughs> and I just think that, you know, there's not really many snooker players that could, uh, could, could have had, no, it's not confidence, but believe that they could do that, you know, because it's not an easy game. But yeah. I just feel it, you know, I just feel that, yeah, it, it's, it's going to happen, you know. So yeah. I think that's what people like about the way I play the game, maybe, you know. Yeah. If you enjoyed this, if you want more, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.